known as Hollywood's go-to medium uh, and with over 300,000 people on his waiting list and celebrity clients like the Kardashians and Rebel Wilson, it's fair to say that Tyler Henry is in demand. Well, in just a moment, we'll be speaking to Tyler, but first, let's take a look at him in action in his latest docuseries, Life After Death. And live from LA, Tyler Henry joins us now. Good morning, Tyler. Good morning, or top of the morning, as I should say. Oh, <laughs> Happy St. Patrick's Day. Um, so, with the I mean, obviously, um, there are skeptics, uh, and I and I, I have interviewed many people on here who have uh, have sort of professed to do the same sort of thing as as you. This morning, I started reading newspaper articles about you, and even hard. Bitten journalist said, OK, don't quite understand how he's done this, uh, but it's very accurate. So that's why you have 300,000 people on your waiting list. When did you know that there was something a bit different about your ability? Sure. Well, this all really started for me when I was only 10 years old. Uh, I had a really ordinary childhood, but I randomly one night just woke up and had this knowingness that my grandmother was going to pass away. And at the time, I didn't know what to make sense of it or how to place it, but I went into the room to try to describe what I was feeling to my mom. And as I was explaining this to her, we were interrupted by her phone ringing. And when she picked up the phone, it was actually my dad delivering the news that my grandmother had just died. So it was really the catalyst that kicked off a series of moments of knowingness that would kind of follow me throughout my life. And growing up, Tyler, when these moments happened, were there any moments where you just thought, oh, this is going to get me into trouble? Shall I just keep this secret? Absolutely. And it would be about the most random things. You know, I would be walking the PE track with the other boys or sitting in class, getting impressions around my teachers. And as the new Netflix show actually focuses on, I was able to touch base with a former teacher and she was able to share her experience as I gave her a message after class one day. And it helped you with the school bullies as well, didn't it? It sure did. There was one instance where a bully came into the school bathroom as I was washing my hands and I turned around knowing I was likely about ready to get beaten up and out of my mouth were these words that just left. I said, I, your aunt knows that you were crying with your dad last night and you need to leave me alone. And sure enough, his aunt had passed away. Oh he God. had evidently been crying with his dad the night before and he never bullied me again. What do you see then, Tyler? How does it come to you? I always tell people that it's really multifaceted. So my sixth sense uses the other five senses to communicate. Um, it's more of like an active daydream. So I don't see dead people walking around. I think my job would be a lot easier if that were the case. If anything, I just get into a meditative state of mind where I'm really hyper aware of any changes that go on in my mind or in my body. And I've learned how to kind of interpret those messages and uh, make sense of them through validation. And all this happened as a hobby. At what point did you decide, I could make this a career? Sure. Well, at the age of 16, I actually graduated high school early with the encouragement of my teacher and enrolled in my local college to try to become a hospice nurse. So at 16, I felt that hospice nursing would be the most practical application of my ability as I didn't want to really be a medium in the public eye. But word of mouth spread very quickly. And before I knew it, I had read the dean of my college and he actually encouraged me to pursue readings as a career because he saw the impact it had in, in his life. And so then it, it, it ended up obviously on, on TV, uh, and you, uh, you got your show then. Um, and for, for, for you, you say you don't really want to know too much about the person, but when you've got, you know, sort of Hollywood actors, actresses, icons, uh, you, you know about them beforehand. You yeah. sort of know who they are. Does it make you that much more nervous? Well, I would say definitely with the clients that are recognizable, it's another level of information that I have to kind of let go of and just kind of connect on that intuitive level. It was one of the challenges that was presented on this new Netflix show where I was trying to connect to people in my own family, people I was emotionally invested in that I knew a good amount about. And it actually impeded the process. It was difficult to connect intuitively because I had all of that information logically. So typically, the less I know about the person, the easier it is to connect. It's so interesting. So, so uh, when, if you were to just meet someone, um, do you see it and just not impart that information? Or do they have to ask you and then you have to concentrate? Because you do the scribbling as well, don't you? 
Sure, and scribbling is really my way of kind of turning on, and then when I'm not scribbling, it's my means of kind of turning off. Uh, but there are times when I'm in public where I'll, where I'll certainly get an impression. Sometimes those impressions are strong, sometimes not so much. But I really believe, you know, readings are meant to be done in the right time, in the right place, under the right circumstances. And I really prefer that people reach out to me because you never know what headspace someone is in, and I never want to, you know, make things worse for someone. So I try to just leave people better than I find them. And what about these celebrities that you meet, like the Kardashians and Rebel Wilson? I mean, has there ever been a shocking revelation or anything that you thought, oh, my goodness, that reading, I didn't expect it to go that way? Absolutely. They're all very unexpected, but that's one of the challenges with dealing with public figures is you have to get those personal validations that they've not yeah. discussed in interviews, that can't be researched or Googled. And I think of my reading with Rebel Wilson as being so insightful because I was actually able to tap into a medical incident that a family member was having thousands of miles away in that moment. And when she called home, it got validated as making sense. Equally with the Kardashians, when I sat with uh, Kris Jenner, I brought through a reference to a window getting replaced in the house and that this was a conversation she had just had. And sure enough, it was true. So it's those types of things I have to be able to get. Do you ever get it wrong? I definitely have. There's times where I've missed the mark, but I always say even some of the best basketball players miss their free throws. So I aim for about 80%, true, but it definitely varies. You are, uh, you're about to go into uh, sort of arenas with big audiences. Um, so if you've got 3,000 people in, in front of you and you are reading someone uh, and then you suddenly think, oh, God, I really can't say that out loud. Um, um, how, how do you, where is the boundary between what you can say and what yeah. you can't say when you're with a huge audience? Sure. Well, you know, I really liken my job to that of a mailman. So I don't necessarily write the letters. I'm just delivering the message. But as a medium, I do feel some degree of accountability, some degree of tact and diplomacy is necessary in how I maybe bring up certain things. So I think it's important to be considerate of the person's feelings. As we've seen in the show, we do talk about difficult things, you know, alcoholism, loss of loved ones, tragedies, but it can all be done in such a way that is done mindfully and in a considerate way where the person gets the message um, even in a public arena. Do you, do you find, because a lot of criticism that's, that, that's levelled at mediums is that it, you say, you hear them say you took advantage of someone at their worst possible time um, and at their most vulnerable and their most open. Um, but certainly reading the stories that I read this morning, um, it looks like it's almost like a closure or a, a positive affirmation. Comfort. Well, the goal is really to be positive, to try to leave people better than I find them, be it in aiding them with clarity or closure or insight. You know, I don't force what I do on anybody. I have people come to me, they reach out to me on their own volition, and I think when it comes to spirituality and religion, there are just people who uh, fundamentally sometimes don't see the value in it, but I certainly do. And for those I'm able to help, I think they do as well. And Tyler, last question, are you frightened of the other side? I still look both ways when I cross the street, so that should tell you everything. <laughs> uh, thank, thank you, you very much us. indeed. Life After Death is available on Netflix. Thanks, Tyler. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>